What's going on guys, my name is Suboptimal and in this coding tutorial we're going to go over lighting in 3JS. Lighting is one of those core concepts that is absolutely essential when building scenes in 3D. Without lighting, you obviously won't be able to see anything. So in today's video, we're going to go over four different types of lights available in 3JS. Understanding what these lights are and how they differ from each other can help you build 3D scenes with a little more flair. Let's get started. Just as a quick heads up, the template code for this video and all future tutorials that I make about 3JS are going to be based on this setup guide. If you're sort of confused as to where I'm getting this code from, just check out the video and you'll be good to go. So once we set up our 3JS scene, I removed the original cube and I added three separate cubes here. So we got the red, green, and blue cubes. Whole purpose of this is to just make it easier for us to test the different types of lighting available. The first thing I want to talk about is the ambient light. Ambient light basically just equally lights everything in the scene. So adding ambient lighting is pretty straightforward. All you got to do is create the new ambient light and pass in a color and a number for the intensity. So here I'm passing in the color of white with the intensity of 0.5 and I'm adding it to the scene. We can see our scene and how it lights up every single object equally. This is something that you're going to want to basically set up immediately into JS because you're going to want to have all objects to have a little bit of lighting sort of radiating out of them. Ambient lighting is something that is absolutely essential when you're building a 2JS scene. Ambient lighting pairs really well with directional lighting. Unless you're doing like, you know, really complex 3JS scenes, these two are the only two things you need, a directional light and an ambient light. So directional light is kind of like the sun. A directional light is gonna cast parallel rays down from, you know, wherever you set it. And here, if you can see the cast shadow, you're gonna notice that, you know, even though the directional light is initialized just a few units on top of this, this thing is showing a parallel shadow. So as, if I keep sort of like moving down or moving up, the shadow doesn't change because all of these rays are coming parallel from the top. So basically just know that whenever you're creating a 3JS scene, just set up an ambient light and set up a directional light. Setting up a directional light is as simple as setting up an ambient light. All you're gonna do is create a directional light, it takes in a color and an intensity. You can also change the position of it. You wanna set it a little bit above the scene just so that you know the rays are cast in a nice manner. Here I'm passing in zero on the X, two on the Y, and zero on the Z. So it's just like a little bit above everything. This is the red square that we see on our scene. It was just helping us see where this light it has been initialized. So I'm gonna add it to the group. And of course you get a scene like this. So yeah, just remember that these two are sort of the core things that you're gonna want. No matter what you do, it's really easy to set it up. It just takes about two to three lines of code for each setting. Maybe if you want to focus on a specific object here, as you can see, I'm focusing on this green cube at the center. You can create a spotlight like this. And of course, let me cast a shadow so you can sort of see the shadow behind it. You know, it's just a different type of lighting that you can use. Now, you can also change the intensity of this, make it super high or super low if you wanted to. And you can also change the angle. And there are a couple other options that you can change, but the whole point is that this is another sort of lighting technique that you can use for 3JS if you want to specifically highlight something in a scene. Now the spotlight does take in a few other parameters, so it takes in the color, the intensity, and it also takes in like the distance, an angle, and a penumbra, and a decay value. So the point light is just, I mean, as you can imagine, a light that comes from a specific point. So here, the point is set at 2, 2, 2. If I move it around, you can see here, right, um, this is what the point light is. You can change the intensity of it, make it lighter or darker. Right now I'm casting a shadow, but we don't need it to cast the shadow if we don't want to. Say you're making a Legend of Zelda type thing and you want to use fairies in it and, you know, fairies need to exude some amount of light from them, right? That's when you could use something like a spotlight. So we can see here that it takes in the color, the intensity, the distance values. So again, all of these are automatically sent into 3JS, which is why they're optional parameters, but you can customize them if you want, and that's what I'm doing here. 
So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of an understanding of the different types of lightings available in 3JS. Point is, there's a lot of different lighting techniques that you can use. You only need to really care about the first two, ambient and directional light. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Just make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos about 3JS and 3D coding. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.